So we've got an email today from a man named Tim. His email reads, Keith, I got to ask you this question because it doesn't make sense to me. I'm a white man and I love black people. I've donated to black causes such as Black Lives Matter. And even though I know they are kind of off, I did it to show my love and support for black people. How can you support men like John Calvin when he endorsed slavery? Aren't you black? I hope you can respond to this. Thanks. So thank you for writing in, Tim. And yes, I am black. Now, initially, I was going to break this question down and answer each point to kind of lay all this to rest. But then I remembered that a few years ago, I uploaded a clip of Vody Bauckham pretty much perfectly responding to this very question. So I'll go ahead and play that clip of Vody at the end of this clip. Now, what I would like to touch on in this video is the context in which John Calvin stood on regarding slavery. Now, we need to remember that it wasn't just John Calvin that had this train of thought regarding slavery. Okay? If this is the direction we're going, we'd also need to mention other famous notable Calvinists such as Whitfield, Edwards, and even Dabney, to name a few, all pretty much holding to the same views as Calvin in regards to slavery at that time in history. But see, here's the problem. When people think about slavery, especially black people, okay, we think about the evil white man holding the whip and you know beating, killing, and raping black people. But what you have to understand is that John Calvin lived hundreds of years before colonial slavery. Okay, in John Calvin's day, it was a culture. It was the culture for rich men and families to have slaves. Now, speaking to you directly, Tim, okay, if your family was wealthy in the 1500s, you would have had slaves. Okay, that's a fact. But here's another fact slavery wasn't all bad in those times. Okay, men often sold themselves into slavery to pay off debts or just to earn a better wage to support their families. Okay, now, if you read the key points, the key notable points in the book titled Letters of John Calvin, of which is basically a compiled list of his original manuscripts, you find something very interesting. Okay, In my opinion, John Calvin had a quite a biblical view in regards to how slaves should be treated. A great quote from John Calvin in that book is, We as a people cannot overthrow structures of society, but we have a responsibility to treat others well within those structures to the glory of God. From what I can see through my research, if John Calvin did have slaves, he probably treated them well because he feared the Lord. I think there's, I think there's another issue as well. It, you know, people bring up that and, and Edwards and slavery and Calvert, Calvin and, you know, issues that he had. And I, I think one of the dangers in all of that is that we're assuming that, number one, there are some Christian writers, leaders, historical figures out there that weren't sinners, R right? Because whatever Luther wrote, here's a newsflash. What he thought was worse. And I'm, I'm not talking about, about this issue. I just mean in general. He was a sinful man. He said sinful things. He thought sinful things. He did sinful things but so are you. And it's always ironic to me that people want to dismiss Luther or Calvin or Edwards or whomever because of some issue that they find out about in their lives, but they don't disqualify themselves for things that they think and say and do. And the, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, God's never used a sinless man to write things for us. All of them are sinners. Um, so unless you're getting ready to dismiss everything that's ever been written, um, be real careful about, you know, whether or not somebody who writes things that are true and helpful should be dismissed because there are areas in their life um, where they were inconsistent and hypocritical because that's all of us.